All right, listen, I've never seen Jurassic World, Jurassic Park, or Jurassic Boombastic Fantastic Plastic, but here's my take on Henry Wu. What does he do? All right, let's do a little thought experiment here. Close your eyes, picture the least compelling pose or scene from the art on the magic card. Listen, I mean, you want to make a commander deck based around a powerful, charismatic legend, right? Somebody holding a sword or they're, you know, doing whatever this guy's doing. Well, how about a guy with his back turned looking at a computer screen, right? Contrast this with, like, you know, the rest of the art from this set. Indominus Rex, Indoraptor, all those sweet cards. This is honestly the least pleasing art I've ever seen in recent memory, man. And though I have the attention span of a hummingbird, I know magic cards. It's kind of a shame because the mechanics on this guy are interesting. Maybe some altar wizard out there can put Bolo Young on the card for me. All right, man. Henry Wu, InGen Geneticist. Black, green, and blue for a legendary creature, human scientist. It's a 1 4. Henry Wu, InGen Geneticist, and other human creatures you control have exploit. So when this creature enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice a creature. That's what a creature with exploit does, brother. Whenever a creature you control exploits a non human creature, draw a card. If the exploited creature had power 3 or greater, create a treasure token. In these colors, man, you have tremendous non-human token generation. You basically have all the exploit creatures. It's a very interesting mechanic. Aristocrat, creature dying payoffs. It's a nice mix of colors. Let's take a look at seven reasons why you should build a Henry Wu deck. And number one, of course, is the exploit payoffs. You don't have to rely on humans exploiting creatures. Henry Wu says whenever a creature you control exploits a non-human creature, so zombies and nagas count too. You got Sidisi out here, man. Three black black for a legendary creature, Zombie Naga. It's a 4-6 with Death Touch and Exploit. Whenever Sidisi exploits a creature, you may search your library for a card, put it into your hand, then shuffle. This got a list reprint, and I immediately picked up a copy for 4 bucks and change from my zombie deck. It's a beautiful card that's still only about $6. This is golden in a Henry Wu deck, man. The good thing about this being on a creature is that you can recur it, and you can blink it, brother. How about this overcharged amalgam out there? Two blue blue for a creature zombie horror. It's a 3-3 with flash and flying and exploit. When this guy exploits a creature, counter target spell, activated ability, or triggered ability. This is a supremely underrated card in any zombie deck, but with Henry Wu out there, you exploit the amalgam itself. Yes, you can do that. Then draw a card and make a dang treasure, dude. That's not bad for this broad of a counter effect. Plus, look at the art, man. This card is metal, dude. It's huge, hard to tell on the card, but it's as big as the barn it's standing on. I'm gonna put the art up here. And its zombie head is on a chain around its waist, dude. That's bonkers. Now, speaking of art, you also have Profaner of the Dead. Look at this Naga, dude. Magic cards were a little more diesel back in 2015, man. They weren't afraid to show a severed head back then. They weren't that worried about social issues. You know, the Nagas were taking heads in 2015, dude. Anyways, if this guy exploits himself, you're getting all the Henry Wu triggers and clearing a bunch of weenies. Reason number two, you have consistent token generation with cards like Ophiomancer, Jadar, love Jadar, Awakening Zone, Bitter Blossom for all you fancy folks out there. Every turn, churning out exploit fodder that can help you keep your hand full, brother. Number three, and reason for the season all by itself, Pattern of Rebirth, three and a green for an enchantment aura enchant creature. When an enchanted creature dies, that creature's controller may search their library for a creature card, put that card onto the battlefield, then shuffle. This is one of my favorite cards in Jund and now Sultai Sacrifice decks. Sack a stupid 0-1 token with your exploit ability and plop whatever utility creature out there you want, dude. Go get an Avenger of Zendikar if you want, dude. Go get an exploit creature. Do whatever you want to do, you silly goose. Reason number four are these undeath type effects. There are a number of instants that can get your exploited creature right back to the battlefield. So if you have some sweet ETB triggers, sack it to bring it back with Undying Malice or something like that, dude. There are also some Undying creatures worth a look, if, and you can reuse them for your exploit triggers, my brother. Young Wolf is a great one drop. Reason number five is you have cards like Bloodgast and Reassembling Skeleton that bring themselves back from the graveyard every turn. Great role players, great utility creatures in a deck like this. Exploit them turn after turn. These are also key for some loops that we can chat about a little later. Reason number six to try Henry Wu is that you have these fantastic utility humans. You got Eternal Witness out there. Come on, dude. This is another great ETB effect that gets you back whatever ended up in your graveyard. You also have a couple human aristocrats, namely Zulaport Cutthroat and Sir Conrad the Grim. 
Sir Conrad gets him coming and going, man. Fantastic utility creature. Pitiless Plunderer just got a reprint, all right? And is a really decent combo piece in a deck like this. Guess what, dude? He's a human. Combine him with Reassembling Skeleton, Pawn of Ulamog, and you've got yourself a Christmas miracle out there. You just need a drain effect. We also have cards like Notion Thief. This is, come on, man. This is the Notion Thief, brother. This has Flash so you can exploit a creature at instant speed. Then you have the old Yog Moth himself, man. He's also a human, and he's an alternative sacrifice outlet that can draw you into your win conditions. And speaking of win conditions, that brings us to number seven. In these colors, you have fantastic combos, man. We already talked about two tutors to dig them out, Pattern of Rebirth and Sidisi. There are a number of other ones, creature tutors, all that stuff, and these are creature-based combos. We spoke a little about Pitiless Plunderer, how easy it is to combo out with a sacrifice outlet. You also have cards like Grey Merchant, man. This is a great win condition that can be exploited and or sacrificed and come back with Undying. If Micaeus the Unhallowed's on the battlefield, this guy's going to be sacrificed to Yawgmoth for the win. Phyrexian Altar is another nasty combo piece that was pretty cheap for a minute there, at least relative to what it was, man. It was up around $100. This one creeps up, but combos with just about anything. I believe right now it's around $20. Chatterfang, dude, you may not like this, but this is what peak masculinity looks like. Look at this fella. If one or more tokens will be created under your control, those tokens plus that many 1-1 green squirrel creature tokens are created instead. So you're going to create those tokens plus a bunch of squirrels, man, and those squirrels can be sacrificed fodder for your exploit triggers. Now there are literally hundreds of combos in these colors. You can go on uh, Commander Spellbook and look them up, dude. Aristocrats is nice because it requires a board state and certain combo pieces. It kind of requires a lot of moving parts, but these colors are really good at digging them out. The cool thing about Henry Wu is that you don't necessarily need those combos to reliably generate value. Your commander's a value engine. Doesn't need to be a combo deck if that's not what your meta wants to experience, you know what I mean? But the option is there, and there's a lot of well-established combos. A lot of the cards that are just generically good with sacrifice exploit theme are good for combo as well. And bonus reason number eight is of course the Phyrexian Delver. Three black black for a creature Phyrexian zombie, it's a three two. When Phyrexian Delver enters the battlefield, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. You lose life equal to that card's mana value. One of my all time favorite cards due to the sweet retro art, dude, check this out. And it's a decent body attached to a reanimate effect. This is also a non-human creature with power three or greater. Honestly, man, looking at a lot of these cards, most of them are zombies. You could probably just build a zombie deck around Henry Wu as well. Anyways, man, I hope you're enjoying yourself out there in the world. Things are invariably better than they look from the ground. You know, a bird's eye view kind of clarifies things. And look on the bright side, dude. There are so many talented artists out there that can make Henry Wu look like Bolo Young from Kickboxer and Enter the Dragon. That guy's a classic, man. He deserves his own magic card, for God's sakes. I don't even know what this guy looks like. He's got his back turned to the camera, for God's sakes, man. So I'm going to pay somebody to alter it, maybe make a commander deck around it. And that's Better Commander, dude. This is Nikki G for Better Commander signing off.